Russia has been building up its naval presence near Syria in an effort to keep Western allies out of Syria's bloody civil war. Wall Street Journal's Pentagon correspondent Julian Barnes joins us now with details of this. Uh, Julian, thanks for joining us. This is no small thing and no small number of warships. No, this is uh, Russia's uh, largest uh, post-Cold War deployment of uh, its naval forces outside the, the waters uh, 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 immediately surrounding Russia. Um, we've had in recent months uh, between 10 and, and 15 warships uh, uh, near Syria in the Eastern Med. Right now we have 11 ships, including destroyers, intelligence collection uh, ships, frigates. Now the, the, these are these are very much uh, warships, and, and no way could they be viewed in any other way as sending a message. What exactly is the message that Russia wants to send the U.S., Israel, Turkey, the rest of NATO? Uh, the bottom line message is that Russia has a strong interest in Syria, and that there's not going to be a solution to this problem uh, unless it has the blessing of Russia. Uh, you know, it is a message that there are Russians in Syria in force um, and that it has a uh, power uh, in that country. Um, it would be a complicating factor should the U.S. Uh, decide to, to intervene militarily, but the U.S. doesn't look like it wants to intervene militarily in Syria, and one reason is because there's a large Russian presence. Now, they have a port there, a, uh, a, a, a naval base, and that is their only base or naval base in the Mediterranean. So clearly they want to keep that, right? That's right. And, and this, uh, the, the deployments of these ships is a way of them sending, saying, we're not going to give up that base. Now, that's okay with the U.S. The U.S. has signaled privately to Russia that uh, uh, whatever the long-term solution in Syria, the United States is okay with Russia keeping that base. Um, that's going to be something that the uh, U.S. hopes to offer Russia in, in, as they try to lure them uh, to the table to, to take a more active role in pushing out Assad rather than blocking Western efforts in Syria. Um, uh, but uh, the base uh, remains a, a complicating factor for the West. So, D Julian, one of the things that Ru it has been talked about is Russia possibly sell selling an S-300 system of um, guided missiles to, to Assad, and that would be really quite bad news for uh, anyone wanting to intervene in Syria, wouldn't it? That's right. I mean, these are some of the most uh, advanced anti-aircraft uh, uh, and anti-missile systems in the world. Um, the, they're capable of shooting down guided missiles. They're capable of shooting down aircraft. Uh, U.S. officials have told us in recent days they expect this shipment to leave Russia as soon as the end of this month. Um, and it's a system that really worries both U.S. and Israeli officials. Should we, Julian, should we be worried ab about a, 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 a truly enormous multi-state war breaking out centered on Syria um, in, involving all the parties we've talked about, um, it, Israel, Turkey, Russia, the U.S., um, possibly Jordan as well? You know, this is why uh, U.S. and Western defense officials have been saying this is such a problem. It's really apparent to folks that this is not just a Syrian problem. This is not just about a civil war, but that there's a spillover effect, that it could threaten Jordan, that the refugees coming out of Syria could uh, uh, push the Hashemites uh, uh, out of power in Jordan. Turkey is enormously worried about the refugee flows, the possibility of a terrorist state uh, emerging from the rubble of Syria. Um, Iraq could be destabilized. So yes, absolutely, there is a real threat of a regional war coming out of Syria. Well, let's, um, let's hope it can be avoided. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Julian Barnes, Pentagon reporter at The Wall Street Journal.